Today, a movie narrated by a corpse. Yes, a corpse. Number three in the series of movies about movies, Sunset Boulevard, directed by Billy Wilder. If Living in Oblivion was angry comedy, day for night affectionate comedy, Sunset Boulevard is cynical, creepy comedy. Very creepy, very funny, sad, dark, but did I mention creepy? The picture opens at dawn with sirens, motorcycles, police cars, press, and newsreels heading to a swank address on Sunset Boulevard. A voiceover tells us that a murder has been reported, and they all arrive to find a young man floating face down in the swimming pool. Indelible image, shot upward from the bottom of the pool. Behind him, you can see flash photographers through the water. We're looking at the corpse whose voice we've been listening to. And by the way, if anyone ever tries to argue that you shouldn't have narration in a movie, just sit them down and show them Sunset Boulevard. Might change their mind. The voice tells us a big star was involved and then takes us back six months to show us how it came to pass that he wound up floating face down in that pool. We learn he'd been a screenwriter named Joe Gillis, not a very good writer, living in a seedy apartment building trying to bang out stories on a typewriter. Remember typewriters? Out of money, out of options, and the repo men out for his car. To escape them, he turns into a random driveway out on Sunset Boulevard, out where the rich people live. Repo guys miss the turn. But poor Joe Gillis has no idea what kind of a trap he's driven into. The home belongs to a former silent movie star named Norma Desmond, rich, all but forgotten, living in decadent splendor in a house that's much too big for her, Hasn't been touched since the 1920s. It's an unfading monument to her faded glory, a cathedral to her excessive bad taste, and that house is one of the treats of the film. Her bed is amazing, her living room amazing, the art direction and set decoration won Oscars. The great silent star drips with contempt for the talkies, and yet even though her character hates dialogue, ironically, Wilder gives her all the best lines. The lines people never forget, the ones that make the lists of best movie quotes. You probably know them. Even if you haven't seen the picture, you probably know them. But just in case you don't, I'm not going to spoil them here. You should hear them first from Norma's lips. Norma's been dreaming of a comeback. She's written a sprawling mess of a screenplay as her starring vehicle. Happy convenience, eh? Rich patron who needs a script doctor, script writer down on his luck, desperate for work. Behind on his rent, it's a Faustian tale. Joe makes his deal with the devil. He's in his 20s, she's 50. Let the dance begin. <laughs> Funny how Hollywood won't blink at pairing older men with younger women expect us to take it, but flip genders on the age gap and we're expected to disapprove. <laughs> Lurking in the background, keeping the gears turning, a creepy, obsessively protective old butler, Max von Meierling. He's worth watching just for his glower, his gloves, and the way he says, Madame. But there's a lot more to Max than glower, gloves, and accent. Mm, spoilers. What gives this movie special resonance and authenticity is the casting. Norma is played by an actual silent film goddess, Gloria Swanson. And Max is played by the legendary director, Erich von Stroheim. There's a deliberate clash in acting styles between these two relics and the naturalistic acting of William Holden, who plays Joe Gillis. Sunset Boulevard, by the way, did wonders for Holden's career. He would have a string of iconic movies in his future, including Bridge on the River Kwai, Network, and The Wild Bunch. But poor Joe Gillis doesn't stand a chance against Norma's piteous need her desperation, her money. He has another more appropriate love interest, a young woman in the script department at Paramount, played by Nancy Olsen. She represents a possible escape from the trap he has sprung on himself. But we know from the opening there is no escape for Joe Gillis. He is destined to wind up floating face down in Norma's pool. There are few movies about movies that see deeper into the dark heart of desperation that fuels both the hopefuls and the has-beens of Hollywood. There are few films that give you so much of what you want from a movie. Images you can't unsee, lines you can't unhear, and performances you can't shake. Unless, of course, what you want from movies is explosions, chases, and guys in tights who know how to fly, in which case you can shop elsewhere. The screenplay is masterfully constructed in the way it leads us and Joe step by step into darkness, just when you think you know just how creepy things are, there's always one more revelation. <laughs> Academy Award for Story and Screenplay went to Charles Brackett, D.M. Marshman Jr., and Billy Wilder. But it's Norma's picture above all. Norma Desmond is one of the great monsters of the cinema. And like all the great screen monsters, she manages to tug at our heart. Swanson plays her as the ultimate drama queen, balancing on the edge of self-parody, flashing eyes, witchy gestures straight from silent films. Yet somehow she remains real and human, and she will break your heart. Where many movies just peter out in the last reel, this one ends powerfully and grotesquely. There's a closing line that winds up at number seven on the AFI list of all-time best movie quotes, and an image that will sear its way into your memory, all against a perfect music cue from Franz Voxman. He won an Oscar for the score. Until next time, I'm Mikola. 
Even the extras. A lot of extras today. You know, there's a whole lot of Hollywood color throughout the movie. Glimpses of other silent film legends, including Buster Keaton. A visit to the legendary Schwab's drugstore. And scenes on the Paramount lot where we encounter Cecil B. DeMille on the set of his film Samson and Delilah. Early in the movie, we see Joe Gillis' apartment building. That's still standing in Hollywood. Alto Nido Apartments, 1851 North Ivar Street. Norman Desmond's Sunset Boulevard mansion, however, is long gone. Well, in a sense, it was never there. The building we see was actually located miles away from Sunset Boulevard, just off Wilshire Boulevard, not far from downtown. Before it met the wrecking ball, that mansion appeared in another movie classic, Rebel Without a Cause. That's the abandoned house where James Dean, Sal Mineo, and Natalie Wood spend the night. Oh, and in 1929, a young Eric von Stroheim directed a young Gloria Swanson in a film called Queen Kelly. That was financed by her lover at the time, Joseph P. Kennedy. Yes, those Kennedys. Joseph P., father to President John F. Kennedy, Senators Bobby and Teddy. Queen Kelly was never distributed in the U.S., but a clip from it shows up in Sunset Boulevard, standing in for an old Norma Desmond picture. Norma's bed, by the way, recycled from The Phantom of the Opera. If you missed any of my movies about movies, I'm keeping a playlist here. And if you want a well-argued recommendation and review of Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Rings, see Neefsy. It's on his pissed list, movie he watches while drunk. It's a good review. It makes me want to see that picture again now, drunk or sober. Bye now.